Hey guys, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. It's October 15th, about 5 p.m. And the reason I'm giving the date and the time is because it's getting colder out and the days are getting shorter. And this is now going to affect our solar production. I'm in the solar shed right now, as you can see behind me, the uh, batteries and the components. And uh, right now we are running off of uh, six panels that are mounted to the roof of this solar shed. We have an additional nine panels to install, and I figure since the days are getting shorter, we were going to want to capture as much power as possible during the daylight hours, so we might as well get those installed. And what we're going to do for that is build a ground mount. Uh, the ground mount was originally going to be um, adjustable, so we could adjust it from uh, spring, summer, winter, and fall to get the optimal amount of uh, capture, but... How do I put it? It was too expensive. So we have enough panels that we can actually pick the happy medium, which in our location is approximately 30 degree angle. And uh, we're going to locate it 10 degrees south, southeast. So 10 degrees east of direct south. And that is for the optimal collection uh, here in this location. Uh, the, the magnetic south or the south that you'll see on a compass does not capture the optimal amount of uh, energy. And in our location, it's actually an additional 10 degrees to the east. So let me take you outside and show you what we've gotten done thus far. Yvonne and I have installed six posts. These three back here are seven feet tall. The ones in the front are two feet tall. And the distance between the front and the back posts is 8 feet 6 inches. That will give us a rise or an angle of 30 degrees. The next step is going to be attaching 2 by 6s running the full length here and here. And what I did was I took the 2 by 6s and I ripped them down with a 30 degree bevel on the long edge so that when I put them up here flush, that angle will continue down onto the 2x6. After the 2x6s are installed, the next plan is to use unistrut. I have 10 pieces or 10 foot lengths of unistrut that will then connect the front with the rear uh, beams. And to those that unistrut, the panels will be attached. Let me show you some of the equipment that we've got. So here's a better a better view of what I was talking about. The post has a 30 degree angle on the top and this 2x6 has a bevel ripped the entire length to 30 degrees as well. So when this is then attached at the top, it'll have that same bevel. This will be an extension to the 2x6. That way when the unistrut is sitting on top of the bevels, both top on, on the top and on the bottom, uh, it'll sit flat and not on a corner. So this is our pile of stuff that we're going to be using to make this uh, ground mount. This is the unistrut I was talking about here. Picked it up at Home Depot. I wanted to get the deeper well or the deeper channel, the unistrut. It wasn't available. And I figure since the uh, solar panels are going to be bolted just directly to the top of this, it really doesn't matter how deep it is. So I've got six of those. And then these are the two by sixes that have all been already beveled. This is one and a half inch uh, PVC. And it's uh, for above and underground install electrical installation. And what I'm going to be doing is trenching from this location here over to the solar shed over there, which is about 75 feet. Here you can see that the beams have been attached. The uh, bevels line up appropriately between the post and the 2x6. And the total length of the run is 20 feet. I used the lag screws to attach the posts or the beams to the post. And now that this is complete, we're going to get ready to put up the super strut. So I'm not sure what happened to the footage from yesterday, 
but I don't have it. So what we have left to do is place two panels in the upper corners and then they will be attached with three quarter inch, quarter inch 20 bolts through to these universal nuts, locking cone nuts that are made for Unistrut. Once that gets done, I'll be able to wire the panels, each row in series. Let me get back over here. Each row in series, and then the three, uh, three sets of uh, panels in series will be trenched across to the solar shed. So this is the PV wire that I have. It's 10 gauge. It's rated at 600 volts. And of course I don't have enough. I run about, I want to say 150, 175 feet short. So I placed an order through Amazon to get uh, 200 feet of this. And it'll be here probably Wednesday next week. So in the meantime, what I've done is I put a stake in here at the solar shed. And I don't know if you can pick it up or not. But I've got an orange string running now all the way to the ground mount and I'm going to start trenching. The trenching isn't too bad. Temperatures are good. It's early morning still. The worst part is there's some flies around here that just won't leave me alone. Anyways, I guess I've got about 20 feet of trench dug and I'm only at about 8 to 10 in some places 12 inches deep. I'm just trying to get this laid out so I can get the string out of the way and then start going deeper. So once this trench gets uh, laid out, I'm going to take my one and a half inch PVC, I'm going to run a pull string through it, glue the pipe together, and lay it in the trench. So we'll be ready to pull the wire when it arrives on Wednesday. So the laying out of the trench is going pretty well. Haven't uh, run out of gas yet. But what I have done is I've hit the driveway. Now what I have to do is clear out this AB mix on either side of the string and uh, try to keep it separate from the dirt that I'm going to be digging up because I want to be able to pack this down again. It's really working out well, this driveway, and I would hate to uh, have to go buy more AB mix just to repair from the ditch. So I'm about halfway there. One word of advice for anybody who's thinking about trenching underneath an AB mix driveway See if you can figure it another way. I just cleared the top two to three inches of AB mix off with a combination of a, a stiff rake and a flat, flat bladed shovel. And I'll tell you what, that 20 feet was more difficult than the first 50 feet. So I just wanted to, you can hear by my breathing, totally out of breath. So I'm gonna take a break, but when I get back, I'm gonna, I'll then trench this area here with the uh, trenching shovel and then get back to the soft stuff and finish this up. The trench is moving right along. It was funny, clearing off the AB mix over the driveway was a real pain. But once I was through that, apparently the AB mix held the moisture into the gr in the ground uh, from our monsoon rains. And it was really much easier to dig out and get a nice clean a straight wall. As soon as you get past the driveway, the wall turned real sandy and it started collapsing in on itself. So what we did was uh, Yvonne got her watering can with a sprinkler head on it and has been wetting it down and that's helping the wall retain its shape. Oh, and speak of the devil, there she is, helping out, digging those ditches. <laughs> Anyways, we should be done with this in probably about a half an hour. Then we'll take a little break and we're going to come back and get the pipe out and, pardon the expression, lay some pipe. The next step for installing this one and a half inch conduit is to prepare a hole for the elbow that's going to come down through the floor in the solar shed and feed out under the floor into the trench. So what I did was uh, I thought I'd do a practice hole first got out my trusty hole saw kit from Harbor Freight, drilled a hole in a piece of uh, half inch or maybe this is five eighths inch plywood, 
and just wanted to see how it would accept it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it in just like you're seeing here with the swedged end up. And that way I'll be able to seal that hole around the pipe. All right, I've got the hole drilled. I think my placement was pretty good. I just missed the floor joist. I see it underneath there. And now the question is, am I going to be able to get this in and spin it? Beautiful. So that's where the that's where the uh, the six leads from the solar panels will come through. As it turns out, this elbow does not go far enough down below the grade to meet up with my trench. So what I've done is I took another piece, cut it to about 10 inches long. I'll put this in first and attach the elbow down from below. So the problem we're having is the elbow is coming down through the floor just fine. The extension worked perfectly, but the line has to make a slight bend. And of course the Schedule 40 PVC won't do that. Now what I happen to have laying around is a piece of inch and a half flexible tubing left over from our rain barrels. And of course I didn't have a coupling, so I had to take a piece of this flexible tubing here, just cut it, make an ins basically make an inside coupling and put a cap on it. This will fit right onto the Schedule 40 that you may be able to see down there. And then I'll be able to guide a gentle curve and hopefully get this line running. Okay, so I have the connection made and I'm able to make a gentle curve with this flexible, it's really made for a spa, but uh, I just want to protect these PV wires. So it made the connection to the Schedule 40 and now it should be smooth sailing as I uh, continue to lay the conduit in the, in the trench. All right, I've got the pipe or conduit, better said, installed all the way to the solar shed. I've got this much more to go. It's about a six foot or seven foot run. I need to get one 90 soft sweep or long sweep elbow. That'll bring it up. That'll bring the conduit then up this four by four. I'll put another piece of uh, conduit into that elbow. And then I'll be able to feed my PV wires down into that. So now I'm getting ready to glue the individual pieces of PVC together. And if this were plumbing, of course, I'd be using two coats of the uh, PVC glue. But this is just uh, trying to keep the pieces together and keep water from penetrating the, uh, the conduit once it's placed underground. This is a little uh, battery-operated hacksaw from Milwaukee 12-volt that really makes light work of cutting PVC and again uh, just using the PVC glue going to place that long sweep elbow and that will be the area where the wires will feed down into. Last connection and now it's time to move on to building the down tube for that will be placed along this 4x4 post. Same PVC product, just measuring the length. Trying to decide how high I really want to make it. I figure I'll make it longer and I can always cut it shorter if I need to. And once this is cut down to size, I'll take it over to the tent and get some painting done. I want to paint it the same color as the 4x4 just for cosmetic reasons. First thing though is to clean up all the pieces. I have two uh, one and a half inch metal clamps that will be used to secure the conduit to the post and then the conduit itself. Just wiped it down with some mineral spirits real quick to get the heavy dirt and grease off. And then I'm using some Rust-Oleum uh, spray paint and the spray paint is the one that's designed for plastic, or I should say bonds to better to plastic than a regular spray paint. I use this also on the uh, 
part of the gutter system when I was building the bistro table and it's really held up well. So once I get these items painted, I'll be able to then start back tr filling the trench. I got lucky too, that spray paint lasted just the right amount. In fact, I threw away the can and then I said, whoops, I gotta paint something else. Went out to the trash can, pulled it out, and uh, painted this little piece of conduit that protrudes through the floor of the solar shed. Now the satisfying part of backfilling. Backfilling is so much more fun than digging the trench itself. This is the point where I was contemplating pulling out the hose and running the garden hose over and soaking it down, but um, I decided to do the, the little tamping there instead. We'll get a rain and it'll be it'll it'll solidify. I'm not too concerned about it. Now it's back over to where the conduit goes underneath the solar shed. I replace the skirting panels and we'll get this back filled. And then one of the important things to do over here is to seal off the corners as well as uh, going behind the rain barrels with some larger rock so that our dog Chloe doesn't uh, work her way back there. That's about it. Okay, with that, I'm gonna call it quits for this video. We have the entire trench backfilled and we're ready to pull wires. Uh, I just got a notice from Amazon that of course my wire has been delayed a day or two. So now we're expecting it on Friday. But anyways, we have other things to do around the uh, property. Today we're also going to be covering Yvonne's greenhouse with some plastic, getting it ready for the colder days and nights. So anyways, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment box below. And we appreciate you watching. And the next video, which will show the wiring of the new array, should be next week. Thanks again. Have a good day. And we'll see you in the next video.